We start with a point. Hello friends, welcome back to the Imagining the Tenth Dimension video blog. Today's entry is called An Expanding 4D Sphere. How old is the universe? Most scientists currently peg it at around 13.7 billion years. A light year, of course, is the distance light travels in one year. If I look through a telescope then, what's the furthest I should be able to see? Intuitively, we would presume it to be no more than a distance of 13.7 billion light years. Now I want to put up a link to a video that explains how cosmic expansion complicates this. Because everything is moving away from everything else as the universe expands, currently observable particles can theoretically be as far away as 42 billion light years in any direction. And early stars can be as much as 36 billion light years away in any direction. And actually, since uh, this video has been published, uh, uh, there's been further evidence that it may be even a much wider expanse than that. In the holographic universe, I showed a way of visualizing how our space-time is not completely flat, but instead has a very slight curve to it. It's easy to confuse this statement to think that we're saying that space has a slight curve to it, and this can be the start of some confusion. In the video we are looking at uh, here in the link, we see that we're at the center of a 3D sphere with a radius of perhaps 42 billion light years. If we're thinking about 4D space-time though, we're thinking about how that 3D sphere is on the surface of a 4D hypersphere. And this relates to the recently proved Poincaré conjecture, which we talked about in Why Do We Need More Than Three Dimensions? In the video for the holographic universe, I showed how this slight curvature of space-time could create the observable universe horizon that we're talking about above. If time has a slight curve to it, then it's like we're in the middle of the ocean, and the horizon we see around us is the furthest distance back in time we're able to see. In the Wikipedia article on the cosmological horizon, it says this, It has been said that the observable universe is many orders of magnitude smaller than the greater universe that lies beyond the limits of our perception. Imagine that the entire cosmological horizon is modeled by a sphere that is the diameter of a quarter. If Alan Guth's inflationary model of early era cosmology is correct, the universe that lies beyond this quarter-sized horizon would conservatively be a sphere as large as the Earth globe itself. If this is really the scale of curvature we're talking about here, then space-time for our purposes is flat. If our universe were the size of a quarter and its curvature was the equivalent of the curvature of the Earth's surface, imagine how sensitive a measurement you'd have to make to be able to register that curvature. But space-time does indeed have a slight curve to it, and that's an important piece of the puzzle we're putting together. Now there's a uh, link we're going to put up to a video. Uh, if you don't want to watch the whole thing, I invite you to watch it from about the 5 minute 50 second part if you want to jump to the section where I show a way of visualizing how our space-time is curved. Now in what's south of the South Pole and the map in the territory, we looked at how tricky it can be to create useful visualizations of concepts like these. Visualizing a 3D sphere on the surface of a 4D hypersphere boggles the mind. The beauty of the approach I'm using with this project is that these are all really spatial dimensions that we're talking about. This means that as per the point line plane postulate, which can be used to visualize any number of spatial dimensions, we can simplify this concept to imagine that our 3D universe is a point moving on the surface of an expanding 4D plane, and that plane has a slight curvature to it which takes us into the fifth dimension. The slight curvature gives us the impression that our universe has a certain size, but that size is an illusion. Like the boat in the middle of the ocean looking at a horizon all around them, we have to understand that there is still much more beyond that horizon which exists, even though we can't see it from our current point of observation. In Where Are You, I made the point that each of us is right at the center of our own version of the universe, and as metaphysical as that may sound, the above discussions show a scientific reason for why this is so. Next entry is going to be called When's a Knot, Not a Knot. My name is Rob Bryanton. Enjoy the journey.
Thank you.